Right. Good morning. How are you all? <laughs> I never know how to open up these sort of sessions, whether it should be, Hi, I'm Anthony, I do Drupal, or whether it should be more like Stadium Rock. Scream for me, DrupalCon! <laughs> so. <laughs> so, anyway, good morning. Delighted you are all here. Uh, anybody make it to the Frostle Box party last night and feeling a little worse for wear? Yeah, well, we'll muscle through. So, um, I'm going to be talking about working remotely. I work from home. Um, and it's about the challenges that I found when going from a nine to five desk job in an office to work in your, you know, effectively your own hours and your own setup and your own place looking after yourself. Um, I'm not trying to tell anyone how to live their life. This is the stuff that I've discovered and the stuff that's been working for me. So take any nuggets you like, call bullshit on the stuff that you disagree with, and we'll have a good time, I hope. So, um, so my name's Anthony. I work for Irish Development Shop um, Anertech. Um, I've been doing Drupal since Drupal 5. Um, yes, yes, 5. <laughs> um, and I've been working doing Drupal full time for like five years. Um, and yeah, I trained as a civil engineer, but that was crap because there was too much rain and too much mud. Um, so a nice indoor desk job with no heavy lifting suits me a lot better. So, um, I used to work, as I said, in a 9-to-5 office job. Um, I live in Crumlin, which is about five miles that way. And the office was in Inchcore, which is also about five miles that way. So it was a 25-minute walk, 10-minute cycle. Nice short commute. And that was great. Um, but then... The office moved into town, so city centre, and everyone's really excited. Oh, city centre, brilliant! All the you know restaurants and shops and buzz of town. That was great. So that meant it took ten minutes more to get to uh, the office, and ten minutes more to get home from the office. And it doesn't sound like much, but when you do the maths, twice a day, ten minutes each time, five days a week, forty-eight weeks of the year, it works out at about eighty hours. No, not 80 hours. Yes, 80 hours, which is about five waking 16-hour days, effectively gone from your year, which is kind of scary and irritating when you think about it. <laughs> so, um, but you're busy. Why? Do I, I hate wasting time commuting. It really pisses me off. I, and, you know, it's been so long since I've been doing commuting now. I came in on the bus yesterday and was like, God, this takes forever. So that sucks. But anyway, combine that with the curveballs that life throws you. Like, my kids start at school. And school starts at 10 to 9. I had to be in the office at 9. And it's a 20-minute journey on the bike. So that just isn't going to work. And then for the first week, they finish at like 10.30. And then the next week, they finish at maybe 11.30. And the next week, they finish at maybe 12.30. It's insane. My wife joined the board of the school and stopped all of that. So that made me happy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, having to be in one place at one time, it just makes the rest of life a lot more difficult. So... Joining Anertech was a real game changer. And working from home. And like think about it, you're you're moving from a situation where, you know, you're in a crowded office, people sneezing on you and stuff, as happens, pawing at your screen, you're dealing with, you know, a, a four year old Windows knockoff trying to make it work, Windows networks held together with spit and glue and hope. And noise, distraction, craziness, all of that stuff. And then you're moving to an environment that you control with your own kit and your own um, 
your own setup. You can basically work when you want, how you work, or how you want, whenever suits your body, whenever suits your sleep patterns, when choose to work when you're working best or when you feel most productive. Um, and it's it's huge. It's yeah, it's it it's, it it changes your life. <laughs> so now obviously there's no commute and I can drop the kids to school and that's great. And then I'm back in time for like we've got a daily stand up meeting every morning, say hi, shoot the breeze, <laughs> share problems and solutions and all the rest. Um and it's amazing. So um when I started working from home, my wife was worried about isolation. You know, you're going from a packed office that's full of people and lots of busyness, and then you're going to sitting with your laptop on your knee in your on or on your couch and nobody about. And she was worried that I'd get yeah, well, isolated, worried, like, um, I could go insular, oh no, crap, I can't, I can't solve these problems, and there's nobody here to talk to, and all of this. And Amtech was a lot smaller back then. There was, in effect, three of us. There's, what, 14, 15 now? Yeah. So that's amazing in its own right. But uh, so originally there was Stella and Alan and Edward. Stella was going on maternity leave, so I was hired to cover that maternity leave with a view to staying on. That was great. And we'd planned to have, because Stella lives in Ratfarnham, which is like three miles from my house. So nice 45 minute walk. Um, and we'd planned to have two, um, are those Twitter notifications turning up on the telly there? No. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, we planned to have two weeks working side by side in Stella's office uh, so that I could learn the ropes, you know, get up to speed with Git and Drush and all of that good stuff. And the day before I was due to start, I got a call from Dermot, her husband. Tomorrow is cancelled. The baby's coming early. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, our, our carefully planned onboarding two weeks didn't work. Um, so instead, my three-mile trip to the office turned into a 125 mile commute over to Galway to visit Alan. So that was fun. Um, we just contracted two weeks into two days and right, run along, here's some projects, work away. So that was fun. Um, so we used Skype for communication. Skype was like our boardroom back then and we'd have an open Skype chat channel, which was basically the lifeline. You know, you have a problem, you throw it into Skype, you hope that someone's going to have, uh, or stop tweeting. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> hope that someone's going to um, have solved the problem, be able to point you in the right direction. But I actually had to learn like a protocol around that. Like you can't be hacking away and then Alan comes online first thing in the morning and you go, oh, Alan, help me with Ubercart. Because the response was, at least say hello. Come on. <laughs> Remember, we're, we're people, <laughs> and I haven't had coffee yet. So yeah, we, we had to learn the protocols of, of chat. And you know the way you can't really get sarcasm properly in tone into text chat. So occasionally, when you read back through the, what's the term, scroll back? Um, if you haven't been necessarily following the conversation, you're reading back, you're going, ooh, ooh, that's a bit off, isn't it? But um, it mostly works, mostly works. HTML style faux markup to impose tone can be nice. Um, but so yeah, at the, at the start, it was a bit of a baptism of fire, you know, I was, expecting be, to be doing site building straight off and that quickly turned into development and the Byzantine depths of Ubercart and Drupal 6 and that was nasty but it was you know it was fun it was entertaining but you know imposter syndrome quickly sets in and you're going oh man when are they going to figure out I'm making this shit up as I go along and um, uh, then I, was, I had a call with Alan on Ubercart and I said, 
so how do you how do you do this and he goes i don't know you know more about ubercart than i do and i had this kind of almost fearful hero worship of alan um and when he reckoned that i knew more about it than he did it made me realize oh maybe maybe either everyone's making it up or i know more than i think i do so that helped a lot with with the imposter syndrome <laughs> Um, so that was, that was cool. First few months, did it see, but they were fun. But in terms of where I was working, like, you know, I was in my house. I didn't have an office per se. So I'd rove around the house, you know, laptop on the couch, <coughs> move to the kitchen, sit at the kitchen table, go to the comfy chair. Comfy chair is gorgeous, but the arms are a little bit too close to your sides. So you can't get your elbows into type. So that sucked. And it took me ages to figure out why my shoulders were hurting. Doing this. <laughs> um, but uh, so, yeah, I needed an office. So the coup de grace was to kick my kid out of his bedroom. Um, so moved the two boys in together with bunk beds, and I scored an office. So you need an office. Um, a lot. So, like, you, you need to be able to set up your environment that's conducive to being productive and conducive to, 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 you need to want to be there. It has to be a pleasant place to go, you know? Um, some people like offices because it'll offer a way of having a boundary in between work life and home life. Like some people like to be able to get up in the morning, you know, get dressed in work related clothes so they're already in the work mindset, go to the office, shut the door, I'm in work. Open the office, shut the door, I'm not in work. They need that sort of physical boundary. I'm a lot more fluid. Like I'm still happy to occasionally wander down, lie on the couch, laptop on my knee. But, um, the boundaries between work life and home life are important and the office can help that because you can shut out the rest of the world. Um, whilst I'm fluid about my office, my boundaries are kind of a bit different. Like I don't have work email on my phone, which I think all the rest of the Anotechies think is weird. But I don't have Slack on my phone. But weirdly, I do have Trello, so if I need to, I can crank it up and check out tickets and actually talk to the clients. But um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so anyway, if you have your office and you can go in and be in your work mode and you can get that working with your own body clock, it's just gold dust, you know? Like I often do my best work at stupid o'clock in the morning. Stella will often be hacking away at 11 o'clock at night. Um, and it's, it's a game changer being able to work when you feel productive. You know, hey, I'm doing nothing Saturday night. Let's crack out a ticket. Bang, bang, bang. Um, it sucks having to work when you don't feel like it. So just being able to mix it up is brilliant. So, yeah, as I say, some people need structure. Um, and they need the rigidity of the nine to five. But if you can work with, with your own life and your own body and your own cycles as opposed to against them, everything's a lot easier. <laughs> so, yeah, as I, I mentioned, it's, it's your responsibility as a remote worker to set up your environment to be uh, conducive to productivity because it's an amazing privilege to be able to work from home. And, you know, it's, it's just a, a, you should respect the people and circumstances that are making that happen um, and give it the best shot you can, you know? There's trust implied in being given the privilege to work from home. So, yeah, we should honor that. So, um, whilst one of the joys of working from home and working flexible hours is that you can deal with all of the little curveballs that life throws you, 
you have to remember that at the end of the week, the work still needs to be done. You know, it's it it's just not cricket to get to Friday and go, oh, do you know what? I've only logged 10 hours. Eh, that's not cool. People are going to be relying on, you know, a certain amount of output from you, you know? People are, like, the project managers are going to be going, right, um, how much work is somebody going to do? That much. That's what we're planning on. That's what we're planning for, you know? It's going to wreck all the plans in the world if you're just sitting around playing PlayStation. Um, so in the early days, I struggled with that. Like, I remember driving down to see my in-laws in Wexford on Friday and realizing that I pretty much owed two days' work because of Dawson earlier in the week. Um, so I had to hide in a little windowless cupboard for the weekend, hugging the router because the broadband was terrible and hiding from my uh, family whilst I cranked out the necessary, you know? Stuff needs to be done. Um, and the other thing, I suppose, is it's really important to, to make sure to meet your, your regular meetings. Like, if you've got, like, we got stand up at 9.30 in the morning. There's, I've got planning call in the afternoon on a Friday. We, I don't have a lot of scheduled meetings, but it's really important to make them. Because, you know, that's your connection to your teammates. That's your connection to, to your colleagues, the people you work with. And you can find out what's going on in their lives. And they're more than just fingers hitting buttons. They're, they're, they're people with problems like yours, with solutions for problems that you've got. You know, it makes, makes a, a lot, a lot easier. Um, so in kitting out your office, I would say that you should go and do it now. Um, it's really important to set it up nicely. Like, get the best computer you can. That's probably a bit of a no-brainer because you're going to be using this thing for, what, like four or five years, probably every day. Time spent reinstalling applications and, you know, or fighting with your operating system. That's not billable time. You know, that's not going to make anybody any money. Um, and this is, you know, that computer is your meal ticket. It's, it's going to facilitate everything. Uh, so it's, it's worthwhile investing heavily there. Uh, then a great, now great chair is important. I had a crap chair. I got the sore back. I went to Ikea and got a meh chair. The sore back didn't go away. And it wasn't, you know, that's like five years it wasn't until writing all of this that I went, you know what, I need to buy myself a new chair. So it's coming on Wednesday. It's being delivered. So that's a win. Uh, so invest in a good chair. Save yourself a lot of hassle. Um, uh, do you know what? A lot less than I expected. I was expecting a cool grand or something. I think it was 285 Um so now you've got your great chair, try not to use it. So I've been reading a lot about how, you know, sitting is the new smoking and sitting is killing us and just keep moving and all the rest. So I invested in a standing desk. Um, now these you can get from Ikea now. Alas, you couldn't when I got mine, so that sucked. But hey, standing desks were amazing. Um, and you may be tempted to experiment with like a, a little coffee table and stick it up on top of your desk and put your laptop on the coffee table. And that works once or twice. But unless you're just using a MacBook Air with no uh, accessories, it's just not really practical. Because once you've got cables and extra screens and all of that other stuff, it's just a pain to, to go from sitting to standing. So you need one of these desks with the motors and you push the button. Um, it also looks cool when you're on a Google Hangout and you just raise yourself up like Darth Vader. Burn, dun, 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 dun. Um, <laughs> uh, 
But the whole point, the whole point of a standing desk is variation in posture. It's like, it's no good to be sitting all the time. It's no good to be standing all the time. But, you know, mix it up. At stand for your calls. I read that you actually uh, sound more confident when you're standing when you're speaking. What's that about? Anyway, um, say, go and get coffee and then sit down. Go for a walk, come back, stand for an hour. You know, mix it up. Um, it, you know, it, it keeps you, it, you burn more calories when you're standing for a start, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it just makes, certainly makes me feel better than if I'm static the entire day. Uh, one thing I still need to do for my office is decent task lighting. Really need to get one of those angle poise lamps to actually illuminate my work area. And it's been bugging me for ages, but I had two pretty table lamps that I really didn't want to get rid of, but the lamps just blew on them, so now they're, now they're for the bin. I'm going to get proper task lighting. But yeah, you really notice it, particularly in the winter when it's dark. Um, proper lighting is, is a good time. Um, it's worthwhile to customize your space to just sort of inspire you. Stick up artwork you like, you know, dig out your old painted miniatures from your college days. Um, get your, your favorite books, stick them on the shelf. Um, make sure you got a good stereo so you can crank out the tunes that you like. Stuff that'll help you work your way through problems, stuff that'll inspire you to be creative, stuff, again, that makes the space nice to be in. Um, certainly for the type of work I do, second screen is invaluable. Like a load of the lads have gone large and like Mike's got a huge telly here and a huge telly here and he sits his tiny laptop in the middle. Gavin's got a similar setup. Um, I've got one extra screen, invaluable in terms of productivity, just in terms of like, right, there's Trello on that screen, here's an editor on this screen, and all of your information is there, and there's no endless window flicking to find the information you want. Um, and then the last two items I have here on Office are kind of no-brainers. Proper broadband. Uh, because if you can't support like Google Hangouts on your broadband, you're, it's just it's a problem. Because you know, text chat, video chat, audio chat, it's all going over the internet, and it's your lifeline um, to the rest of the world. And you know, if it's consistently flaky, it's just no good. And then lastly, um, I ex I'm guessing that this is something that's often forgotten about. Get a backup. Like, I use Time Machine. I've got a little you plug in USB um, hard drive. I experimented with a, a media server and backing up over Wi-Fi. Don't do that, because it takes weeks. Um, you know, like, back up off-site. Send a, a clone of your hard drive to another location. If, God forbid, you spill your tea on your laptop and it blows up, you need to get back up and running as fast as you can. And the best way to do that is to have a full backup. Um, one last thing on the office front. Don't let your kids near your work stuff. Seriously. <laughs> I see people going around with smashed phones and cracked iPads and keys missing off their laptops. Ah, yeah, someone wanted to watch YouTube and now jammy fingers all over it. Yeah. Um, my kids know not to touch this because I went through them for a shortcut when they did. Um, there's other devices for them to mess with. Um, you know, Playstations and whatnot. But I think it's very important for... Because you don't want to be spending mental energy fixing this. This is for, you know, making money with. It's not for entertaining my kids with fart noises and cat videos. They love those. Uh, so, speaking of children. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, noise is a challenge. Um, so, I've... Yeah, kids are noisy. Families are noisy. Your crazy neighbor with a chainsaw. I are noisy. Um, and you need to at least a strategy for a dealing with that. Like, the way I tend to deal with it is I repurposed an old surround sound uh, DVD player and use it to play music. So whenever the family is at large and making loads of noise, I crank up the death metal and just drown them out, which works fine, except if I have a call. Welcome. Come in. <laughs> if I have a call, I have to go around the house and go, listen, I have a call in half an hour. Shut up. I'll be patrolling for the five minutes beforehand. Right, call time. Call time. Everybody okay with that? Call time? Brilliant. It's reminiscent of back in the early 80s when you'd be trying to record songs off the radio. You'd be holding your <laughs> holding your, your uh, tape deck up to the radio because you know the DJ's going to play the song you requested, right? And you're just hoping to... To, to heaven <laughs> that everyone's gonna shut the hell up whilst you're recording so it's a bit like that and it mostly works I'd, it'd be more difficult if like I was a PM or someone who's gonna be on calls all the time um, I mean like you could use you could use like noise cancelling headphones or something to block out the noise but it doesn't work when you're when you're on calls and the mic's picking up all sorts of ambient noise I don't have a solution for that I would love to hear some uh, if anybody's got any ideas. But, um, like, some guys just manage to get a, a more remote room in their house or set up a, a, one of these, like, wooden shed things down the bottom of their garden and use that as their office. Um, so, yeah, other than, other than threatening people and blocking out the noise with more noise, that's all I've got going on, I'm afraid. But yeah, it's it's a challenge. It needs thinking about. So uh, on a different note, I thought it was worth mentioning kind of like differences between remote working and distributed working. Like where Anatech is distributed by default, so we all basically work from home. Um, and remote working is certainly within this context, that's where there is an office, but some people are remote from it. So it's quite a different proposition because in, in the distributed world, everyone's on, in our, certainly in our office, like we're, everyone's on Slack, everyone's on Google Hangouts, everyone's using the same tools to communicate, the same channels. If you've got an office environment and remote workers. The remote workers are limited by the technolo technological communication tools, whereas the office-bound people have got the water cooler chat and office or uh, desk bombing and, 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 and chatting at the coffee maker, in-person meetings. So it's more of a challenge for the remote worker then. They're more likely to feel isolated because they're not getting all of that extra uh, communication, all that extra information, they're probably going to be playing catch up a lot, you know. Um, so in my last job, we had a, it was an, an office-y place, but we had a remote worker. Um, a friend of mine sat beside me, we got on very well, worked very well together. And then he decided, hey, I'm going to move to the States. So I kind of panicked because I didn't want to have to get a new team member in to replace him and spoke very firmly to the boss that he should be allowed work remotely. So that was great. He did a lot of his work on the web, so technologically it was easy. But um, we had to do like a cultural shift to make it work. You know, we had to make a, a top-down decision. Everyone's installing Skype. We're going to use Skype chat by default. You know, where we got a speakerphone thingy so that we could dial them in for in-person meetings, made a point of including our remote guy. And he comes over twice a year for a couple of weeks for 
to press the flesh and um, have that person to person contact. And it works really well. He's been doing it for seven years. Now, he allowed that he, um, he was working more once he moved remote. He felt like he had to justify his existence uh, because people weren't watching him and seeing him at his desk. He felt like he had to work harder to justify it and, and to prove that he wasn't slacking off. Um, now, apparently, that has grown less over time as, I guess, you know, like, if you're doing it for years and it's working, it's proved itself, right? Uh, but, yeah, I thought that was a, that was a great success story, and, but I think it's because, it's worked because of this organizational effort to make it work. If it was just everyone in the office going, damn it, how come he gets to work remotely? How come we have to go to the office? Um, but weirdly, that never came up. So, yay. Anyway, that's the difference between remote and distributed. They're different challenges. Uh, I think as a distributed team, we've got it easier. Um, how am I doing for time? When am I meant to be finished? Half, half 11? No, quarter to 12? 11.45, okay, we're doing okay. So, um, obviously, you know, health and happiness go hand in hand. Um, the first winter when I was working with Anartec and roving around with no office and lying on the couch, uh, it was really cold. It was wet, it was dark, because I started in November, so straight into nasty winter time. Um, I wouldn't leave the house for three or four days because, you know, Tesco was delivering. <laughs> I was comfy on my couch. And then after work, put that down. Hello, PlayStation. And it was great. And then I actually noticed after a few months of this, I noticed walking up the stairs was more difficult. And I thought, oh, man, I must be coming down with something. OK, let's take this easy. Walk slower. That didn't help. Um, and it actually culminated in like a couple of weeks of effectively being sick. So that sucked a lot. Um, uh, <laughs> it took a while to figure out that the problem was just, you know, staying in and staying static all the time was bad. So eventually I figured it out, took up running, which sucked because I suck at running. I had to relearn how to run like three times. Um, that was its own challenge, but the benefits of it were fantastic. You know, I could chase the kids around. I could go up the stairs without wheezing. Um, so, you know, I found, I found running really hard. So I mix it up now. I've joined a gym first time ever. Like if you'd asked college age me, whether I'd be doing exercise, you get laughed at. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. It, it, it reduces my stress. It allows me to clear my head, get focus, all of this stuff. I'm sure you guys have read all of this. Um, exercise equals good. Um, more energy. It's great. Um, I actually found that on days, not days, like if I go four or five days without exercising, say it's raining and I'm stuck in the in-law's house where you can't really go for a walk, my mood just plummets. So, yeah, happiness equals exercise, apparently. There's a takeaway. Um, so, oh, yeah. I mentioned that um, my friend Paul, the remote worker in America, was, was working more when he went rem working remote. And I've heard that sort of story lots from different people that I've spoken to. I was talking to a guy... Um, this summer when we were on holidays, met this guy and he'd gone working remotely. And he was doing 50 and 60 hour weeks, which is just mental. It's, it, well, it's unsustainable and gonna end up being bad for you. Um, like, obviously, work is really important. And especially if you love with you, what you do, it's no great um, burden to be, to be working and working and working. And it's great, but, and you should be able to prioritize your work. But hand in hand with that, you need to prioritize your life 
that whole work-life balance thing, like working remotely facilitates that and it's amazing. But the whole point, I think, is to make your work time more productive by making everything happier and healthier. So build in to your work time, build in breaks, build in your exercise, build in outside time, go for a walk, see some trees and rabbits and de-stress. And when you've done your work, stop, go relax, you've justified yourself, go for a pint, chill out, stop working. Um, so yeah, health, exercise, all good. Um, getting outside, I found really, 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 really important. Um, not just because leaving the house, not leaving the house for a week will make you poorly, but just in terms of de-stressing. Um, I'll often come up against a bug, can't fix it go for a walk there's a park near my house so i've actually <laughs> i've got timers set up on my phone my neighbors must think i'm cracked um five to the hour quick walk to the village and back it's like 250 steps it's not far um but and then there's a park over there so if i want a slightly longer walk just wander around the park but if i come up against a bug i'll go for a walk come back as often as not, I have a solution. Because your subconscious is always beating away at these problems in the background whilst you're enjoying the trees and the rabbits. Um, so, I found, I found that it can help to actually take a measure of the amount of activity you're doing, physical activity like. Um, cause like you might think you're, you're moving a lot. You might think that you're doing a lot of exercise. Like I used to, I'm always late for school, picking the guys up from school, dropping them off and all the rest. Um, you might think that you're doing a lot, run to school, collect the lads, run home, but school's only like, I don't know, 500 meters away. Does that really count? <laughs> I don't know. But, um... <coughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little Fitbit fanboy for a moment. My wife got a Fitbit activity tracker because uh, she wanted to get fitter and do more exercise and all the rest. She showed me the shiny graphs on her smartphone and all of the glorious data that it collects, and it completely tweaked every geeky bone in my body. So I became obsessed with her data and she got pissed off and bought me a Fitbit and sent me on my way to, <laughs> to do it myself. Um, so it's actually really cool because like it's got targets, you know, 10,000 steps a day and walk eight kilometers and go up so many flights of stairs and all the rest. Uh, but we, it's changed how we act in our house. We want to hit those targets. It's like, you know, like when you're a kid and you get a gold star in your activity sheet. It's just the same. I get this little endorphin rush when I feel the thing buzzing at 10,000 steps. Um, and we're actually getting off the couch at 10 or 11 at night. You know, we've been watching TV. Ah, oh, Breaking Bad. Ah, oh, brilliant. Shite. I've got 2,000 steps to go. Right. I'll be back in half an hour. And we'd never do that otherwise. You know, it's just a great motivator. Um, so, you know, there's loads of ways to measure your activity, the smartphone apps and Garmin thingies and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, we found them really motivating just in, in terms of getting off the couch. Um, one thing I forgot to do, and Alan berated me badly for this because we do this whenever we're doing performance work on a website. Take baseline measurements before you do any work. And I forgot to check how much activity I was doing without putting in effort. So, yeah, I can't say, oh yeah, double the amount of steps I do in the day. I don't know. But anyway, it's good. Um, oh, I'm forgetting about me damn incidental slides. 
Right, oh, now, here's the thing that might seem stupid or obvious or overly simple, but it matters. So when you're at home, you've access to your kitchen and your larder. You're not restricted to whatever the local cafe can give you. And for a foodie like me, it's amazing. But alas, my lovely wife likes to keep the larder well stocked. So I've now got access to all the peanuts and chocolate bickies that I could want. So there's a degree of more mental fortitude required to stop me gorging every day. Um, so yeah, that was an unexpected challenge, having to manage my own junk cravings um because just ac easy access easy access to all these snackable goodies is um both good and bad um so yeah i guess i just wanted to say that it's it's important to eat properly at proper meal times and as i say it might be stupid it might be obvious but it's something i had to remind myself when i was working in my last job particularly when we were in Inchicor before we moved to town. There was a little Tesco just across the road and they were great for marking down the price on anything that was going to go out of date. So I'd go in there with a euro and come out with an armful of sandwiches and a ticket masala. Uh, I firmly remember, I'm not really proud of this, but hey, um, we're all friends, right? <laughs> I remember sitting on the counter in the office dunking sausage rolls into a curry for lunch probably ingested a year's worth of salt and fat and sugar in one go um, so that wasn't good that wasn't good um, but yeah nowadays I like to whip up a big soup or a dal or something on a Monday and that's lunch sorted for the week. I don't have to think about it then, but I know I'm not going to have the three o'clock slump and I'm going to feel good for the afternoon and I'm not going to be rolling around like in a bloated mess, which is what we used to do. Um, so, quick self-indulgent digression. Please humour me. Amazing, amazing, amazing cookbooks. Definitely look them up if you're at all interested in cooking and food. And if you're not, that is funny and very insightful. He has guidelines on the difference between food and imitation food-like products. And thing, interesting things like, don't buy your food where you buy your petrol. Or shop at the outside edges of the supermarket, because that's where the real food is and not the food-like products in the middle. Or don't eat anything that your grandma wouldn't recognize as food. So, yeah, that's well worth a read. Very interesting. So, uh, in different news, yeah, mental health. So, I said at the start that my wife was worried about me being isolated and feeling alone and all of that sort of stuff. And, you know, the key to not having that is communication. So, as I've mentioned that we have stand-ups every morning. Uh, we use Google Hangouts. And that was kind of revolutionary. We were just Skype and just audio, and that was fine. And I don't know, I think we might have been a bit nervous about going video. <laughs> but um, it does mean everybody has to get dressed. But that's probably a good thing, right? Um, so yeah, Google Hangouts is amazing. And we've, got, we've now set up uh, sort of Hangouts for our different teams and for like subject matter. and. Uh, myself and Gavin work in support, and um, our our chat is called Down the Pub. And every time we we uh, have a meeting on that particular hangout, inevitably it makes me smile. Um, so yeah, like you can you can find joy where you want to find it. Um, but yeah, communication is where it's at, and don't let your inner imposter stop you or think you know i don't want to ask this question because it's stupid ask the stupid question because if it's stupid so much the better you'll probably get an answer um probably somebody else has the solution that that you need 
Um, and the other thing that I came up with was get enough sleep. You know, everything feels better when you're not tired. It's not rocket surgery. But um, it can be difficult. Like, sleeping more is often not an option. But sleeping better can be. Um, so, you know, like, I was, I was trying to figure out, trying to hack my sleep, you know, uh, trying to get, get rid of all of the things that would stop me sleeping well. Turns out there's loads of things that stop me sleeping well. Like, you know, if there's any light at all in the bedroom, for example, somebody in the next, in the bed beside me reading, Arr, that'll stop it. Uh, if it's too hot, or if I exercise too close to bedtime, you know, or if I've been drinking, or if I've been watching really entertaining TV, all that affects sleep. So it's, it's I guess the point is, the, it's worth doing a little bit of navel gazing, a little self-examination going, what is, what stops me sleeping? You know, what did I do the night before when I haven't slept? Um, and equally, then you can figure out what does help you sleep. It turns out sitting in the comfy chair and reading a book helps me sleep. Um, as I said, it's not, it's not rocket surgery. Uh, one really cool thing, actually, that I would like to share on this related topic is so in winter time when it's dark and uh, I hate winter I always get bummed out at winter uh, but we got a dawn simulator alarm clock so cool so yeah I see furrowed brows and confused faces <laughs> so you set your alarm for say I have mine set for 6 six thirty because I like to start early so that, especially if I'm going to be picking up the kids in the afternoon or something, get my day's work in beforehand, you know. Um, set your alarm for 6.30, and this thing starts to glow at 6, and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter over the course of half an hour until it's at full brightness at 6.30. And it, yeah, it, it, it simulates dawn, and your body responds to it. And if you can time it, <coughs> with the circadian rhythms of your own sleep like i've got a sleep cycle of about an hour and a half so if you can time it to six hours or seven and a half hours or whatever you don't feel like crap when you wake up which is brilliant so that revolutionized winter time um oh yeah and um, another thing uh i was talking to a few guys who use full spectrum light bulbs in the office, I think Iterate have those. Um, so the idea is to get around the lack of sunlight in the winter time. These things simulate sunshine, and rather than you know sitting with your face in a light box, um, they actually just install them in the in the ceiling, um, and apparently they're fantastic. I haven't tried them yet, but uh, that's worth looking into. Um, yeah, and the other, the last bit on, on mental health is it, it kind of, well, it comes back to communication, but get into physical contact with your co-workers. Make a point of going to visit. Um, like sometimes I'll just go, Stella, I'm coming over. Are you in? And we'll just sit in the couch together and work. Often on completely separate projects, we'll have tea together. Um, but, yeah, being close to people every now and again is good. We have, uh, we make a point of getting together as a group, yeah, the whole company, uh, a few times a year, like once a quarter or something. That's the aim. Uh, but then, you know, you've got camps, you've got DrupalCon. Um, yeah, a big point of everybody coming to DrupalCon is to be together. We can all go out and hang out and get to know each other a little better. Because, in effect, we're spending a lot of time together and like uh, I barely ever seen Karen in the flesh because she lives in France um, so anyway yeah so co-working and getting together physically that's important now oh crap I'm gonna run out of time okay okay we'll speed up <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is important because of that whole justifying your existence thing and because nobody's going to be minding you. This is It's like when you go to college for the first time and you're, it's the difference between school and college. You know, in college, it's your own lookout to do the work, to go to your lectures and working remotely is the same because your boss isn't always looking over your shoulder. Your colleagues aren't all knuckling down and you feel compelled to do it too. Everybody's remote. So it's... It's important to be able to convince yourself that you've done enough. Um, and, well, hell, you can use it to convince your boss that you've done enough. Uh, but, yeah, find out. If you're looking at what you're doing, how long it's taking, um, you can find out what the time sucks are, where you're wasting time, streamline your processes, and basically just boost your productivity. So time you can't account for is difficult to bill for. That's what it comes down to. Um, so I use that. I didn't find a task timer that I liked, so I wrote one. It's on GitHub. Knock yourselves out. Um, oh, oh, there's a photo. Come on, is it, are you done? Good. <laughs> right. Time pressures. OK, now, so here's a couple of challenges. That was really surprising. It wasn't just me who had to learn how to work remotely. Everybody in the house had to learn how to have someone work remotely. Like if I'm at home, my kids thought, yay, dad's there, brilliant. He's available, but no, I'm working. So you need to actually set, I don't know, I hesitate to say rules, guidelines maybe, like the pirate's code. Um, <laughs> So they know now, they know that when I'm working, I can't play with them. But they love to be able to run up, say, hi, here's an interesting fact about my day, and leave again. And then they're happy. Equally, my lovely wife had to figure out the boundaries as well. Uh, we're still working on that. Um, <laughs> her fun thing. So sometimes... In the same way that I work flexible hours, she works kind of flexible hours, and sometimes she'll work late on, say, a, a Tuesday or whatever, and she'll work and then do yoga, and then she'll come home. Maybe it's 10.30. I've done dinner, done bedtime, got the kids to bed, and she'll come in. Maybe I'm working now, hacking away. She's just home. She's now in off time. I'm in work mode. She wants to tell me about her day. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Half an hour later. Oh, sorry, were you working? <laughs> and we've talked about this and laughed about it. It's no secret, you know? Um, but, <laughs> yeah, it's something that we need to, to work out. It's One thing I do now is I'll pull up my task timer and press stop very visibly and then turn around and go, right, you now have my full attention. <laughs> um... So, oh yeah, now, here was an interesting thing as well. When I started working from home, all of a sudden she had visibility into all of the time that I was at my desk, whereas you wouldn't otherwise, you know? And whereas I was tracking my time in reasonably meticulously, um, so I knew what I was doing. And, you know, this is time when I'm actually working and time when I'm doing bookkeeping and time when I'm doing expenses and receipts and tax returns and all of that associated junk. Um, she was convinced that I was working far too much. Now, I suspect I was just spreading out the work over maybe a longer period and taking breaks and stuff in between. But from her perspective, her perception was going from having no visibility into it to seeing me working all the time. And just going, oh, it's not good, not good. So we had to get over that hump. Um, I think she's happier now. But yeah, that was a surprise. Um, then the last thing I'm going to say, because I'm conscious that I'm running out of time, we'll flick on to outside activities. I love what I do. A lot. I love doing it. 
But, as a part of the theme of get outside, have other activities that you can go and do. It's not just Drupal all the time. And that might be sacrilegious at DrupalCon. <laughs> but, like, you know, have half a dozen things in a month that you can say, I go and do this. I go and sing in musicals on a Tuesday. I meet my mates in the pub on a Thursday and we play role-playing games. I occasionally go cycling with some people and, you know, do stuff. Because, you know, you can't be working all the time, even if it's your hobby and it's fun, which it kind of is. Um, so, yeah, like having Drupal as a hobby is fantastic. And getting to work on something you love is fantastic. But I guess you can have too much of a good thing. So, yeah, mix it up. So I'm going to call time on that. Uh, I think I have a minute left. <laughs> So, <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that and got something out of it. Um, you know, if anyone has questions after that information deluge and rant, there's a mic there. Uh, otherwise, we'll go back to yoga and the prodigy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I managed to um, delete the sprint slide, so please evaluate the session. Um, but go to the sprints tomorrow. Thanks a million. Thank you. All right, how's nice it going? Stuff. Yeah. I haven't said that yet. Hey. That was good. That was, I, that that was, was fun. <laughs>